crowd will be cheering for the gold medal champion from Barcelona, now back fighting in front of his fans here near East Los Angeles where he grew up. And the boos, no doubt, are coming from those Avila fans who have come from Bakersfield and Palmdale, where John is from. And John also spent a number of years living here in Los Angeles. So we'll have a noisy, enthusiastic crowd. De La Hoya, 15 and 0 with 14 knockouts. John Avila, 20 victories, only one loss with 11 knockouts. And let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the Grand Olympic Auditorium here in Los Angeles, California, where CBS Sports Quaker State Boxing Championship Series continues with a world title bout brought to you by Top Rank Incorporated. The officials assigned to ringside by the California State Athletic Commission are as follows. The judges scoring the bout on a 10 points must system will be Lou Moret from California, Horacio Bacamon from the Dominican Republic, and Pat Russell from California. Our physicians at ringside are Dr. Richard Loris, Dr. Robert Carnes, and Dr. Adam Carnes. The timekeeper is Debbie Garcia, and when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Raul Caiz, also from California. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Grand Olympic Auditorium of the City of Angels, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing for the WBO, lightweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red with white trim, and weighing in at 135 pounds. His professional record, 20 victories with one defeat. One draw, 11 of his 20 victories are by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Palmdale, California, the challenger, the electrifying Tony Avila. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing a white and weighing in at 135 pounds. This 1992 Olympic gold medalist has a professional record of 15 victories with 14 KOs, and he has captured two WBO world titles. Ladies and gentlemen, from East Los Angeles, California, presenting the undefeated WBO lightweight champion of the world, the golden boy, Oscar De La o Downstairs. I expected to play in the commands at all times. Low blow is right here. Bone on down where I told you. Okay, keep them up. Now shake hands. Good luck to both of you. A quick look at the tail of the tape. 21-year-old Oscar De La Hoya. Avila also just 21. The height advantage to De La Hoya came in right at 135, Ed, as did the challenger, Avila. And the reach goes with the height for De La Hoya. Hey, give me the belt. WBO championship rule. Uh, three knockdown rule in effect, meaning if there are three knockdowns in a round, the fight is over. And the count continues after the bell, except in the final round. I got it. Still three knockdowns. Undefeated Oscar De La Hoya with lots more ahead should he continue his upward surge in the lightweight ranks. And he sees himself as a six-time champion in six different weight divisions. He already holds the WBO version at 130 pounds in addition to his lightweight title. De La Hoya and White, Avila. Very relaxed, confident young man. Yesterday and today when we spoke to him, he knows this is a great opportunity for him. He says, I wasn't a top amateur. I didn't fight as an amateur, so people don't know me like they know an Olympic gold medalist. I'm going to show them today who John Avila is. And Tim, right now, both of these fighters are very, very tight and tense whether it's because they're both uh, hometown guys or what, but uh, I can see that they're both tight. And if you get hit when you're tight, funny things can happen. And the down goes Oscar De La Hoya, although the 
referee, Thais, immediately says it was just a slip, but nonetheless, Avila did get his attention, and I think that tightness you talked about was there. Delaoya trying to back away, lost his balance as he took that jab. Another right hand by Avila. No talking, no talking, be quiet. Delaoya had two early knockdowns earlier in his pro career, came back to win those fights by knockout. But that was not ruled an official knockdown. Right now, Avila, the busier of the two, well, Tim, he told, he told us he was going to work behind that left jab and keep busy with that left jab, and that's exactly what he's doing. Well, he has been very active. But three weeks ago, he knocked out victory over Carl Griffith in Las Vegas. It looks like De La Hoya was looking to land that one big punch. But in the meanwhile, the other kid is being the busier of the two and scoring the points. Avila made a point that most of Deloitte's opponent, opponents to this stage of his young career have been afraid of him, mainly be afraid of the gold medal performance. He says, I'm not. In fact, he thinks that he already knows the weakness, that Deloitte's right hand is still somewhat uneducated to exploit that. There's a right hand from Delaware. That landed, and that got Avila's attention for the first time in the fight. <laughs> Avila's lost only once. Delaware unbeaten. Final 10 seconds of round number one. Scheduled for 12. Stop at the bell. Number two, scheduled for 12, Oscar De La Hoya, the champion in white. The challenger is John Avila in red. And he was the busier of the two in round one. Joe and I both scored that round for Avila. And it appeared to me, Joe, to be a little more relaxed as the round went on than De La Hoya was. Well, Tim, uh, yes. And, but now, this round, Avila is still trying to work behind that jab. But he's short with the jab. You have to step in with that jab and move the guy back which he's not doing. Looks like there might be a slight cut at the corner of the right eye of Avila. It's a trickle of blood there. And there's a lot of redness around the left eye of Oscar De La Hoya. Oya still trying to find the range, flicks out the right hand, and lands. You can see the leverage that uh, De La Hoya gets on those punches. They're much hard more, punches and they're quick. Much more relaxed looking here now in round two. Oscar De La Hoya. Been busy, active, likes to stay in training at Big Bear Lake, 7,000 feet here in California. Large ambitions. Clean up the lightweight titles and move on to higher weight classes. De La Hoya now is starting to back Avila up. from Avila, but the points well taken, Gillett, while he is jabbing, he's not getting close enough to have any real effect with it. <laughs> well, Oya, meanwhile, closing his distance as each 10-second frame goes by in this round and lands the right hand there. Finding his range against the shorter Avila. Under 30 seconds we go in round number two. Nice combination by De La Hoya. Look at that leverage on those punches. Stop at the bell, 10 seconds. Seconds 
seconds of round two. Number three, live from the Grand Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, Oscar De La Hoya in the silver trunks and in red is the challenger, John Avila. And Tim, I noticed in Avila's corner that they told him he's got to get a little closer. He's got to move in I that jab. And I know that used to happen with some of my fighters. I tell him in the corner, look, you got to get step in with that jab. You got to move the guy back. And they go, oh, I wasn't doing that. Then their jab would get more effective. Sometimes you really have to remind the guy of that. But you can't jab and get out of the way at the same time. You got to place that jab and move the other guy back with it. He's got a right. stiff jab. Right hand over the top line from De La Hoya seems to be finding some range with the right. He acknowledges himself that that's the weaker of his two punches and something he's working on. He doesn't feel that he's anywhere near being a finished, polished professional. He knows he's got lots to learn 15 fights into his career. Watch your head. Watch your head. Okay, let's go. Watch your cover shot. I'll you. There was an example of Avila trying to jab and got it away at the same time. If he stepped in with that jab, it would have been a good stiff score. A little blood now up high on the forehead of Avila that apparently came from a blow. We didn't see the bang heads together. Shouldn't be a problem for him unless it is now starting to bleed a little more. It could run down into the Well, Tim, those, uh, those cuts on top of the head, they really bleed profusely, uh, but they're not dangerous at all. Well, unless the blood trickles down into his eye. We'll keep an eye on that. Now it looks like he's got another cut on the inside of his right eye. Or the corner of his right eye. That's trickling down over the bridge of his nose. So Delaware is starting to bust it. And he wants him back with a combination. We're in the third round, scheduled for 12. Delaware picks up the pace. And Tim, for a lightweight, De La Hoya certainly is a big man. He's much, much bigger uh, physically than Avila. He must have hollow bones. But again, Tim, you don't see much head movement out of Oscar De La Hoya. He really doesn't slip punches that well as yet. He stands straight up there. You could really close your eyes and wing punches, and you're going to hit something. He's trying to, but he just isn't loose in that ring as yet. 30 seconds remaining, round three. A little short to the right hand, lands the left behind it though. Oh. Avila really showing the damage. Final seconds of the third. John Avila will need some attention in his corner over there. A cut high on the forehead. You see them going to that one first. And Tim, it's not just a cut uh, on that right eye. He's going to have to get some end swell on that eye because the eye is really starting to swell as now. And I don't see any of his corner men using that at all. His trainer is Dini Crisp. The seconds are Ruben Spring and Rabbit Watkins. They're going to be busy in there. In a second, I'm going to let the doctor come and see us. He's all right. He's all right. It's just a scratch. Be okay. Take a look at this action now. There's that scratch. straight right hand followed by the left hook and another right. left hook. That's what De La Hoya does so well. Puts his punches together. There's okay, that now. wide right hand setting up the left hook, right hand and left hook and left hook again. That's putting your punches together. We're going to rock and roll now. You got to get busy, baby. You can see they're working around the inside corner of his right eye. He's got a little nick there. You can see it on the outside, just on the eyelid. So John Avila has been marked up here in the first in the three clinic, rounds by Oscar start, De La Hoya. Like stay at the end of this punch. All right, Marcus is in. Second time, let's go. The doctor came in to take a look at Avila's cuts, and so thus we have a little longer than the normal one minute between rounds three and four, and away we go. Fourth round, scheduled for 12. Oscar De Hoya defending his WBO lightweight championship. He wants the more distinguished title. And again, Tim, uh, Avila is throwing out that left jab, and he's throwing it short. He's not reaching uh, De La Hoya with the jab. And when you do that, that's very, very dangerous because he's not moving the guy, and the guy can really counter with hard punches. 
Tim Ryan with Bill Clancy and Andrea Joyce live from the Grand Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles on CBS Ion Sports. Something he hasn't been concentrating on against the taller De Loya, but Gil pointed out he hasn't been able to get close enough to land scoring punches. It's easy to see that Del Oya will be able to grow into a welterweight. He's got 5'10", he's a young man, just 21. As a lightweight, uh, he is a fearsome sight at that height. Already up five pounds from his Olympic weight in 1992. And Avila threw that right hand with bad intentions. Just missed. John Avila from Palmdale, California. Did live in Los Angeles for a time. Trains some in Reno, Nevada. And Tim, again, uh, Oscar De La Hoya just does not slip punches. He, he doesn't move that head enough. But, you know, the way we teach guys in the gymnasium is to get a clothesline line and have the guy bob and weave underneath the clothesline. line. Somebody has got to start doing it with uh, De La Hoya. Would that be the first thing you'd work on if you were Ab training him? Absolutely, Tim. Every day when he'd come into that gym, he'd be bobbing and weaving two or three rounds. Avila fighting mainly backing up. He just has not been able to get inside the long arms of Deloya, and he takes a tough left hand from Oscar Deloya there. Under 30 seconds we go. Almost caught Avila off balance there as he was backpedaling. Coming to the end of round number four. When you round number five, scheduled for 12, the WBO lightweight championship at stake, unbeaten Oscar De La Hoya defending against John Avila. A pair of Californians doing battle here at the Grand Olympic Auditorium. We're live on CBS Ion Sports from LA. And De La Hoya is really putting pressure on Ivy right now. Backing him up constantly, making him work every second. No timeout during these three minutes. Good work in the Avila corner. No blood from that cut high on his forehead. And in fact, uh, the two nicks around his eye don't seem to be covering him at the moment. Tim, for him to get into this fight, he's going to have to stiffen up that jab. If you can't hit a guy with a jab, you're not going to be able to hit him with anything. He did score the left hand there, and... Deloya fired right back. Deloya has only had to go more than four rounds three times in his first 15 pro fights. He's in the fourth year. In the fifth year, pardon me. Avila now is just being overwhelmed by uh, Oscar's superior height, superior strength, and hand speed. to go in round five. Referee Caiz has uh, stopped the 
fight momentarily here for the doctor to examine the cut. Well, let me finish this one. Okay. Raul Caiz, the referee, gets an okay from the doctor. Tim, that's a very, very cautious referee. It certainly it's, is. It's not that big a cut at all. Closed him. And Delaware is all over him now. Crowd coming alive at the Olympic. Oh, so many great Mexican American champions of the past. Ten seconds. A lot of swelling under the right eye of the challenger Avila. Final seconds of round five. Stop at the bell. Stop. Whoa. And that looks fucked up. Whoa, whoa. And you can see Avila is not happy with the referee no, having no, stopped baby. the fight. Yeah. Doc, that eye, you guys are going to start thinking about stopping it. Look at that eye. Doc, check it out. It's all right. I know. It's all right, Doc. We got it under control. Ain't no blood. Put that on there. Put it on there. We'll have it away from the eye. It's in the major thing that that right eye Love needs is an end swell. There it is. Now they're finally right. using the end swell on the you eye. Start punching more, little babe. Come on now. The end swell is a uh, chilled piece of metal that they for? use to reduce swelling. I thought you were in condition. Everything cool? <laughs> All right. And here's uh, Oscar De La Hoya moving that, those hands, putting them together, keeping the pressure. Well, he's taking, he's there's taking that a left hook right to the temple. Ready, I'm getting ready to stop it. Yeah. And Avi was yeah, trying to fire back it. with that right hand, but not very effectively. In the De La Hoya corner, you can hear them telling their fighter that they're getting ready to stop it to encourage him to go out here and ended himself in round number six. Delaware has been in command since the second round. Bumping up the face of the challenger Avila, opening three separate cuts. Avila gamely hanging in here and quarreling with the referee who had the round five stop for the doctor to examine. Maybe getting a little bit careless here in his effort to end things. Go! Well, Avila now has decided to take some chances, Tim, trying to wing that right hand. Remember, he's lost only once in 22 fights, John Avila. on his record. Tim, uh, again with Oscar De La Hoya, he's putting plenty of pressure on, on Avila, but he's not going to be coming in in a straight line all the time. range for John Avila. Avila is going to have to land a big, big punch to get back into this fight. The range is going to be a problem for all of the lightweights. 135 pounds, there aren't too many at 5'10". Los Angeles, round seven, Oscar De La Hoya 
in the silver trunks defending his WBO lightweight championship. He is 15-0 against the challenge of John Avila. And Avila just dropped De La Hoya. Avila and Red, the challenger. And De La Hoya in a little bit of trouble. Trying to get close enough to follow up. It's been all De La Hoya since the first round. And suddenly Avila turns it around. Just to show you uh, what a mental game boxing is. This gave Avila such a just a boost mentally, Tim, that he's really taking chances Punch now three, and winging go. punches. Well, Oye didn't attempt to tie him up. He's never had to do that as a pro. And now he's starting to rally. But he, st he stayed nice and calm, Tim. He did. Kept his hands up, uh, pushed uh, Avila back, used his body strength. fans brought alive by that shot from their man. Again, uh, Avila would be so much more effective if, even if he doubled up that left hand to get closer. And now De La Hoya backs Avila back to the rope. This is an Olympic no fight talking, now. No talking, no this talking. is what they expect here. It's a neighborhood brawl. Yes, man. it is. from Palmdale, but for five years, and they're just a few blocks away from Oscar De La Hoya. Big left hook to the body by De La Hoya. De La Hoya now with a fury. Drives Avila back to the ropes again. Keep him up, Oscar. Avila wings a right hand. That fell short. Under a minute to go in the seventh. But again, Tim, De La Hoya comes straight in. You can throw punches at him there. He's going to have to learn to faint a little bit more and move that head a little bit more. Avila breathing a little more heavily from the mouth now. He might have used up a little gas in that glory after he landed the one big shot. He's backing up. Delahoy on the march. He lands the left hand. Misses two. Little butt from the corner now again of the right eye from the inside of the bridge of the nose of Avila. Avila trying to get inside that time. Coming to the end of the seventh, a good jab from Deloya. Stop at the back. Look at that big right hand. Start of round seven, right on the button, Tim, and he hurt De La Hoya with that punch. Round number eight. De La Hoya has only been this far twice before, an eight-round decision in an eight-round fight over Mike Grable in April of 93. And then a ten-round decision, a stoppage, pardon me, against Jimmy Breedall when he won the 130-pound version of the WBO crown. for 12, We're live from the Olympic in Los Angeles. In line with Gil Clancy and Andrew Jason. De La Hoya banging to the body that time. He's been mainly headhunting in this fight. And Tim, any time he does throw that left hook to the body, it sets up his other punches. That's his, always been his best combination. Left hook to the body, left hook on the chin, right hand on the chin. Avila sneaks a couple of jabs through. to the body and then back up on the chin you see Delaware now trying to get a little more leverage in that body shot there's a right hand back from Avila that landed good counter the right hand from the champion De La Hoya. Avila has managed to get a little closer to uh, De La Hoya in the last last couple of rounds backed up that time by De La Hoya. And again, but Tim, he has a little more confidence uh, in his own punching ability now. And he has been stepping in with some punches. Delaware backs up Avila and Avila ties him up. Okay. A little blood from the cut at the corner of the outside corner of the right eye of Avila. A lot of swelling there as well. He's taking a lot of punishment there. 
Two good body shots from Delaware. Keep him up. And he gets a warning from the referee, Caiz. The low blows. And he's taking a point. Tim, I didn't even think they were low blows. And uh, no, no previous warning, and he took a point. Well, he did have a warning earlier, Gil. Well, he did, he did have a warning, but that, that was uh, the first point taken away. Bottom, Tim. Some guys, when they get one, they stop punching to the body. But Delaware went right back with that left hook underneath, which has been his most effective punch. And something he wasn't using in the early rounds, but he's certainly found the range there the last couple of rounds. That was the 32nd mark in the eighth. A lot of swelling now under the right eye. For Avila, final seconds of the eighth. And Avila scores inside, but Avila uh, Delaware backed him right up. Okay, against John Avila, and thus he finds himself in the ninth round. Only once before, as you mentioned earlier, when he won the 130-pound WBO crowd, he stopped Jimmy Vidal in ten rounds. In the ninth, it's been old Delaware as we see it since the first round. Lost a point for a low blow in the eighth. And here, here we see uh, Avila, Tim, he's managed to get back inside. He's doubling up that jab. He's back in with the right hand. He is a lot closer to De La Hoya now than he has been earlier in the fight. And lands a right hand. And one big right hand back in the seventh. And rock the champion. for the doctor to look at the cut at the right eye. He has one on each side and they're stopping it. That one on the outside corner ripped open in the last exchange. Oscar De La Hoya with a ninth round stoppage of John Avila. Mixed reaction from the crowd because this is the Olympic. There are a lot of Avila fans here as well. And their man gave it his all, but the more powerful Oscar De La Hoya remains undefeated 16-0 with his 15th knockout and retains his WBO lightweight championship. De La Hoya with that left hook, right hand to the side, another right hand, left hook again. Once he knows he's got you hurt, Oscar De La Hoya becomes a terror. There's a triple left hook, Tim, and another left hook. Here we, we see De La Hoya, he knows he has the guy in trouble. Look at the way that hand speed goes. Look at the way he puts those punches together. And look at that balance. Gets that leverage on those punches. Avila was willing to go on, but the referee and the doctor agreed the cut was too serious. Uh, we'll be back to talk to, uh, to talk to Oscar De La Hoya after this message. Stay with us here on Ion Sports. Back live at the Olympic with the champion, WBO lightweight champ, Oscar De La Hoya. Congratulations, Oscar. Uh, only the uh, second time you had to go beyond eight rounds. Did you expect to have to go nine? Well, I didn't expect it. Actually, I did expect it. I'm sorry, because John Avila, I knew he was a fighter who can, uh, who can take a punch, a fighter who has great skills. And um, CBS here, I am uh, had lots of time on TV, so I'm, I'm very happy, glad about that. All right, let's go back into the seventh round, that one scary moment you had. He caught you with the right hand. Let's look at it. What happened? Well, he did catch me with the right hand, but... Um, I mean, you know how the crowd gets into it, and um, there, there's a half-and-half half crowd here. So he did catch me right, but nothing to be scared of. I mean, I was in total control, and um, he just made me move back a bit. But um, I, I, can, I can take a good punch, and um, I know how to come back like a champion. 
Well, it looks like that's exactly what you did, and people who may wonder whether you could take a good shot saw one example there that you can. Now, in the in the next round, of course, you had already had him cut up and bruised up and lumped up, so as you said, you were in control. Did you know here in the ninth that, uh, that this could be the finish? Well, the people want to see blood. They want to see action, and um, I knew they were going to get that here in this fight, but... Uh, Boxing is all about showing your skills. Boxing is all about looking good up there, not destroying the guy, cutting him up. If he was wounded, why not stop the fight but he, because he could get seriously injured? All right, well, you mentioned the fact that there were cheers from both sides of the aisle here. It must be a special thrill to be fighting in the Olympic, especially against another Californian when you know the crowd's on each side. It's a beautiful thrill. It's an exciting moment. And um, this was an excellent tune-up fight to, to go against John John Molina on February 18th on HBO. All right. Well, good luck to you in the next one. Everybody's looking forward to the rest of your career. Oscar De La Hoya, and he has just been named Fighter of the Year by the WBO. So take a look at it as we take you away for a commercial message. We'll be right back.